Hey Space Cadets, Lanchin here. Welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to be going over the question that I ask artists all the time. And that is, how do you guys package your stuff? And the reason I'm making this video specifically is because I've never gotten a straightforward answer or have seen a video that's like, this is the right way to do it. So I'm just going to show you the way I've come up with that works for me and this is what I do. So. I create my own little label to add to my packaging just to make it look a little more official. I got this stamp from North to South Designs. I will link her below if you would like to get a custom stamp from her. And I make all these little cards individually and yeah, I know I could get them printed, but I just haven't done that yet. And this is what I do so far. I had to make 10 of these because I was shipping 10 items and then I have to cut them all out individually so that way they look a little cleaner on the edges. This process is very lengthy. I know there's a faster way to do it by get, getting this stuff printed, but like I said, just haven't done it yet. So the next thing I'm going to do is take my resin piece and I'm going to take my acid-free paper, which is for art, and I'm going to wrap it around the art piece itself, making sure that the edges don't lay on top of the resin. I'm very particular about the way I package my resin art because I've had issues with the edge of the paper touching the front of it and it leaving an indent. So I am super careful that my, my paper is completely flat on the top of it. Then I'm going to roll up those edges and just tape it off as usual. And I'm trying to make it look as clean as possible. Next, I'm going to glue my little label that I made to the front of it and I'm not pushing it down because I don't want it to go through the paper. I just want it to sit on the paper. And I also have the name of the painting as well. So the person receiving it knows, oh, this is my painting. And then I'll write the name of the painting on a little post-it and put it to the side. I will be using that later to remember which one's which. Now it's time for the bubble wrap. The most important thing about the bubble wrap is making sure that you put the bubbles on the outside, not the inside. I learned that the hard way by having indentions left on my artwork by putting it the opposite direction. So if you are using bubble wrap, just make sure you do that. I only wrapped my smaller pieces once, but you can do it as many times as you need. And a little hack that I like to use when taping the edges when I'm packaging by myself, which I always am, is I put a piece of tape onto my cabinet and then I attach the tape to the folded edge and then I just pull it straight off and it just makes it in a straight line. It's so easy and simple. Next, I add some ribbon that kind of resembles stars to me and I just do this to add a little personal touch to my items. I also make sure when I'm adding it, I am not squeezing the painting at all. There's no pressure on the actual painting itself. It's strictly there hanging around the edges loosely for decoration. And then I add a random NASA sticker. I have a bunch of random ones that I like to put in there just for fun. And then I also place the name of the painting that will remind me later of which painting it is. At this point, I was so freaking exhausted because I only had done about two and I had eight more to go. I continued cutting out all of the bubble wrap and wrapping the rest of the pieces till it was done. And yeah, it, it took some time, but just because they're wrapped doesn't mean the process of this is over. So this is what they looked like when they were finished. And as you can see, I have a bunch of different random NASA stickers. And I just think this is the cutest touch ever. I use USPS Priority Mail flat rate packages. This is the best bang for my buck here in California. It's the fastest shipping. It has up to $50 insurance. And I always know what the cost is going to be because it's flat rate. Also, I can order these boxes online for free and have them shipped to my house in packs of 10 or 20. So it's really convenient for me. I don't even have to leave. I use packaging paper. I got this from Staples, but I think you can find it at a Home Depot too. And this is just what I've used because it's recyclable and I like the option of it because it's easy to fill a package and make sure that my painting stays in there nice and packed tightly, but you know, not too tight to the point that it could possibly get ruined. So all I do is I just smash up the paper and I slowly build around my painting and I shake that box when it's in there to make sure it's not moving. If my painting is moving, then I need to package it more because you don't want the painting to be floating around. And 
Once I know that it's not moving and it's packaged correctly, it's time to tape up the box. I also like to take off that post-it note that I showed you in the beginning and I write the name of the painting on the outside of the box where the label will go so I know which painting it is and who it's for. These boxes already have adhesive, but just in case, I like to tape off the edges again. Once I have done all that, it is time to move on to the next step, which is printing those shipping labels and scheduling a pickup. This has been quite a stressful day. I have been working on packaging these items for, it's been about like four and a half hours. So, hmm. It takes a long time because I want it to look professional and I want it to look neat, which requires me taking my time with it and not rushing through everything and making sure it's packaged correctly where it can't get damaged. Yeah, but there's just so much that goes into finishing up the details. That's why I really wanted to show you guys this whole process because yeah, of course making the art is a process, but getting everything shipped is an even, maybe an even bigger process because there's a lot of mistakes that could be made possibly shipping the wrong piece to the wrong address and yeah, it can be really stressful. So I recently opened my first online store through Shopify two months ago and while I was filming this, I was trying to print my labels through USPS like I used to do and I got super frustrated because it kept canceling on me because I was adding so many labels and then I realized, oh my gosh, I have Shopify. I print my labels through Shopify, it does all that for me. And then I finally started printing my labels. I spent so long adding the addresses and then it canceling on USPS's site just to realize I didn't have to do that. So here's my first label. So I print it out and then back to more arts and crafts where I have to cut everything perfectly. I glue them on. I'm sure I can buy the, uh, the stickers but I haven't done it yet. So I'm still in the process of making things easier for myself, but this is how I'm currently doing it. Finally, I have my label on my box, but it's still not done. I have to go schedule a pickup on the USPS site. This is very, very easy. All I do is I just type in the total amount that these boxes will weigh and how many packages, and then I put them outside at eight o'clock in the morning. All right guys, so that is my full packaging and shipping routine. I know my process is quite lengthy, but until I buy better materials to help speed up that process, this is what I'm working with so far. But that being said, I encourage you all to drop a comment below leaving your helpful packaging tips because I don't claim to know it all and I know that myself and the other artists would appreciate any tips that you have to offer. If you guys like this video though, please give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more art and space related content, then be sure to subscribe to my channel. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it for this one. So Space Cadets, I will see you guys next time. Hello.